Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Gamera series with Gamera vs. Virus, which I have on the same DVD as Gamera vs. Gauss, which was the previous film. Now, this is the fourth film in the Gamera franchise, released in Japan in 1968. The film was later released on television in North America by AIP under the title Destroy All Planets. Now, this version of the film is actually public domain, and I I have the American version on this box set here called Sci-Fi Classics, which features 50 public domain sci-fi movies, including several other Gamera films. Now, Gamera vs. Virus was sort of a turning point in the series, where this is the film that officially established the Shoha Gamera series as the low-budget kitty fair that people today look at it as. And even though they started this in some of the previous films, I would argue that this is the one that also officially cements Gamera as the friend of all children. This movie also showed other studios, including Daiei's rival studio, Toho, that you could get away with doing a feature-length movie by simply padding out the runtime with stock footage. This is actually one of the things that inspired Godzilla's Revenge, believe it or not. And you could kind of tell that the later Godzilla films, especially the ones from the 70s, were very much inspired by the Gamera films, which is ironic considering that Gamera started out as a Godzilla ripoff. But truth be told, though, I would much rather watch any of the later Shoha Godzilla films before watching most of these Shoha Gamera films. Honestly, it's movies like this one that's the reason I used to call Gamera the Poor man's Godzilla. Now, after rewatching a lot of these Shoha Gamera films, I've grown to actually find Gamera to be a pretty unique kaiju, but when I call him the poor man's Godzilla, I'm mainly referring to the movies that he appeared in, because many of these Shoha Gamera films do not do the character justice. So, the plot of Gamera vs. Virus is it begins where this spaceship from a planet called Virus is heading towards Earth, and it turns out that these aliens are planning a massive invasion of Earth, so Gamera intercepts the ship and destroys it. So another alien spaceship comes to Earth, and now they want revenge on Gamera, so they abduct these two Boy Scouts, and basically in the film they blackmail Gamera into working with them, and and now they use Gamera as their weapon against the human race. Gamera eventually turns against them, so these aliens, which are revealed to be these squid-like creatures, merge together with their leader, forming a giant monster that fights Gamera. Now, that's literally the entire plot of the movie. Like, that wasn't even the setup for the movie that I just explained, because the fight between Gamera and the monster virus doesn't happen till the last 10 minutes of the movie. Now, Gamera vs. Virus, in all honesty, is a pretty bad movie, and you can almost taste how cheap this movie is. Like, as I alluded to earlier, a lot of the runtime in this movie is padded out with stock footage from the first three films. Now, what the stock footage that's shown in the film is presented as flashbacks, but it's not like they show you, like, short little clips from the first three movies or something. No, they show you entire fight scenes from Gamera vs. Barugan and Gamera vs. Gauss. And you also get stock footage from the first Gamera movie, but the stock footage from the first film is not presented as a flashback. Because in the movie Gamera is forced to be a bad guy again, the stock footage that's presented of him destroying Tokyo, which is footage from the first movie, is actually supposed to be what's happening in present day of the movie's timeline. So you get the entire scene of Gamera destroying Tokyo from the first movie, Movie, but it's presented as something that's happening in this movie. And the footage is in black and white when the rest of the movie is in color. Now, the fight between Gamera and Virus actually isn't too bad, and for a kid's movie, it gets surprisingly brutal with Virus impaling Gamera at one point. 
And again, the fight between Gamera and Virus doesn't happen till the very end of the movie, and I would have been fine with that if the build-up was any good, but the build-up to the fight isn't any good at all. And really what this movie is, is it's a cheap alien invasion film that's meant for kids that just happens to feature Gamera. But yeah, this is not a very good movie. If I were to say anything positive about the film, I will say there are a few shots of the aliens when you see them in human form, where you see their eyes glowing in the dark, and the effect that they used was actually pretty creepy. And I will say the two main kids were not as obnoxious as I remembered them being. It was also nice to see Kojiro Hongo again. He was in the previous two Gamera films playing different characters, in this movie, he plays the scout leader. And Koji Fujiyama, who played the main human villain in Gamera vs. Baragon, he has a small role in this movie as an army colonel. Now, what the plot of this movie, or plot elements from this movie, would more or less get recycled in every single one of the Shoha Gamera films that followed this one. In fact, the next film in the series, Gamera vs. Giron, is such a repeat of this movie that I sometimes get the two films confused in my head. But yeah, I know this wasn't much of a review, because frankly, this wasn't really much of a movie, but that was my review on Gamera vs. Virus, and bye.